Well, the big day has arrived, or at least one of several big days when it comes to this uh, shelter project. Now, just to recap from previous videos, I'm putting up a 42 by 80 foot fabric structure. I went with a Canadian company called Calhoun. And what you're gonna see here in this video is the pouring of the form that will create a concrete wall upon which this structure will rest. Concrete trucks on the road now. Forms are all complete, as I showed you in a previous video. I've got uh, some help coming, and I got the concrete vibrators ready. So, as I said, today's the day. As I've mentioned before, it's the first time I'm using the fast foot fabric to actually contain the concrete. So that's where I'm a little nervous. I don't have any reason to be nervous, except, you know, it's just the way it is with things like this. And, uh, a lot of pieces of the puzzle have been put in place, and now we're going to assemble it all into a completed form. I ordered 13 cubic meters of concrete for this project, and uh, that proved to be just about the right amount. We're getting set up here. The chutes help to direct the concrete. This is that funnel I showed you about in a previous video. It was proved really valuable, um, mostly because it helped us to hit the target a bit better and keep the forms cleaner and uh, just do a better job. I'm going to be reusing the wood, so clean is good. I'm using a vibrator here, which is essential for this kind of pour. It makes the concrete flow much better, and uh, you really can't do a project like this without it. Um, the concrete just falls in amongst that fiberglass rebar I told you about in a previous video. The vibrator here is a, a cordless dual model. I have a corded vibrator too, but that's a lot heavier and uh, more cumbersome to use. And this one was plenty powerful. And uh, I think it, it took uh, like one and a half batteries worth to pour the whole form. Besides making the concrete flow better, the vibration causes any air bubbles and things to rise to the surface. So um, you just have a more uh, densely packed form. The concrete's into every nook and cranny, and that's exactly what you want. The funnel was easy to pick up. We moved it, you know, 10 or 15 feet between pores. I didn't pour the deepest part of the form all in one go because I just, I've never used the fast foot fabric before. Didn't want to get a nasty surprise, but in practice, we could have poured even this tall part of the form right to the top. Uh, we did let it set up a little bit to get a little bit more firm, take some of the pressure off the, the forms, but uh, that really wasn't necessary. And uh, that fabric worked out great. Saved a lot of time and money, and it does protect the lumber, keep it in good shape so I can use it for other projects later. Now this rebar, as I mentioned before, is uh, epoxied to the rock. The um, lines, the fissures you can see in the limestone here on Manitoulin Island, they run uh, south-southwest, north-northeast. No matter where you are on the island, you'll see those, uh, those lines going in that direction. So the, the drivers, the truck drivers were great. Um, you know, they're just kind of watching me work here now, but they were quite helpful throughout the whole pour, especially at the end as we were running out of light. We were getting more stuff done. I'm screeding now. That's what this is called. I'm just using a piece of 2x4 to level off the top. Sometimes as concrete starts to cure, it settles into the forms, and so you have to add another inch or so of concrete. That didn't happen here, though. There was no settling to speak of after we had screeded everything and made it flat on top. So again, just a little more vibrating here in order to get, uh, get this optimal as good as we can. It's not super important that the top of the concrete be smooth, just that it be flat and not have any lumps sticking out. I'm going to go around later when everything's cured and make note of where the legs will attach to the concrete. If there's any lumps and things there, I'll, I'll work those down, but I don't expect there will be. Uh, it worked really well and uh, it's probably just about as flat as I need it to be. When it comes time to strip the forms, uh, one of the first things we're going to do is to cut off the steel rebar, the stuff that 
uh, anchors that, uh, that, that holds the form to the rock on the outside. We'll be cutting that off flush with the rock using a um, grinder and a thin cutoff wheel and salvaging this lumber. Uh, the rebar is fastened together here you can see with, uh, with ties, twist ties, that hold it together. Those little cross pieces are just to hold the horizontal pieces apart the correct amount. Um, they weren't necessarily as far apart as they should be and those little cross pieces I added them whenever necessary just to uh, to give the appropriate spread between the horizontal runs of rebar. Now here we are just finishing off the first truckload of concrete. That was uh, eight cubic meters in that truck. And the second truck is going to be backing in here with the five remaining meters. And as you can see, the day's getting on. But when you're pouring concrete, you just have to keep going no matter what. Because you want a, a continuous pour without anything, uh, without what they call a cold joint anywhere. So that's where fresh concrete is put on top of hard or semi-hard concrete. I'm looking forward to stripping the forms to see what this pattern looks like. Uh, it should be pretty interesting. Most of it's going to be covered with dirt, certainly all of it inside. Uh, some of the taller areas on the outside will remain this way. But uh, yeah, working on into the night here. It's about 7.30 or so. This is the final pour. Just finishing up, giving things a final smoothening. And, um, and we're, we're ready to go. Well, we did it. We finished the pour. Concrete didn't get here till about 2.30 or 3. And it's 7.30 now and the time of the year when it's dark. But we got it all poured. No blowouts, just a tiny little issue with some of the wood framing. But I'm really pleased. I've been looking forward to this moment to put my head on the pillow tonight and knowing these concrete forms are filled. Um, this, this is part of the Calhoun fabric structure video series I'm doing. Uh, next step is to peel off the forms and then we actually start erecting some of the structure. So hoping to do that before the snow flies too seriously this year. Take care. Thanks for watching.